Hi, my name is Dana Rhodes. I am the state plant regulatory official for the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. What that means is that any pest that's an agricultural threat that's deemed to be a regulatory uh, threat comes through my office, whether it is insect, disease, or weed. And I'm going to discuss with you today the spotted lantern fly and working within the quarantine and things that you'll need to know. Currently, Pennsylvania is the only state in the United States to have spotted lantern fly. This becomes a big concern because it's new to the United States, so we don't know how it's going to react. Uh, we have limited information, um, being that it is new to this side of the world. And also, we need to consider trade and our partners um, in other states and other countries. It's very important as you work and live in the quarantine area to know the different life stages of the insect. Um, the quarantine requires that no living life stage be moved out of the quarantine area. And as each life stage develops, you need to know what to be looking for during certain aspects of the year. The early instars begin hatching in mid-May. Uh, later instars come in around July. Uh, we begin seeing the adults in late July to August, um, and egg masses begin to be laid anywhere from late September to early October. Working in the quarantine, you need to inspect the area that you are in. It is important to watch out for tree lines. Don't park your vehicles in these tree lines, as the insect will fall into them if they are in the in star stage and or in the adult stage. These are not flying, strong flying insects. They're a plant hopper. So they will easily take a ride and be transported uh, whether you're walking through the woodlands or whether you were working in the area and one falls into the bed of your truck. We've had several instances where people have called us. They think that they have an infestation of the spotted lantern fly when actually we determined that they had been in the quarantine area, did not check their vehicle, and had a hitchhiker fall into their truck or into their car. So please know the area that you are in and look and determine the risk for a spotted lanternfly. Why do we put in a quarantine? We want to try and limit the distribution of the insect, especially when we know that it is not in a big area. Relatively speaking, spotted lanternfly is very contained to an area within uh, Berks County, Lehigh, Montgomery, and Chester counties. We also want to slow the spread. We want science to be able to catch up with us so that we can then take action against the insect and eradicate. And we do believe that it is possible with this insect that we have a chance to eradicate it from Pennsylvania and thus the United States. Unlike emerald ash borer that had been here 10 to 15 years before it was discovered, uh, we actually found spotted lanternfly after it had been here just two or three years. So it looks very promising that we'll, we will be able to eradicate this insect, but only if we work together. One of the reasons we are quarantining the area is we have many commodities in Pennsylvania that we are trying to protect. We're fifth in the U.S. in grape production. Um, if you're familiar with the grape company Welch's, that is in Erie, Pennsylvania. We certainly would not want this pest to get to high populations of grape. Uh, currently in Korea, reports are that each bunch of grapes needs to be um, sleeved before to protect it from the sooty, uh, the honeydew excretions from the insects. That would be very labor intensive. We are number one in hardwoods exports in the United States. That's a multi-billion dollar uh, industry for us. That would be a loss of jobs and across the state, and that could have a great impact on uh, the economic standing for Pennsylvania. In orchard productions, we are fifth in the United States, uh, so we have to think about crating materials, not letting those get uh, egg masses, or again, as we've talked about, other life stages in the crates that could then be shipped across the United States. 
nursery stock and greenhouse were fourth. State parks were actually third in the U.S., uh, just behind Alaska and California, and the number of state parks that we have. So an insect coming in could potentially do a lot of uh, damage to our state parks, and that's our tourist industry there. For trade, we have to be careful. If we were to do nothing against this insect, then our trading partners in other states and also in other countries would look at this and they may put up quarantines against us. They still may do that. However, because of the action that we have taken in order to try and, and limit the spread um, and putting the quarantine into place, currently there are no external quarantines that have been placed against Pennsylvania, which is good uh, for us to be able to sell our commodities. So what is quarantined? All living life stages of the spot and lantern fly and because they can be found in various forms, you have to think about what they may lay their eggs on. So that means all outdoor household items such as grills, picnic tables, pools, or could be come infested with spotted lanternfly. We have to think about vehicles, as I mentioned, falling into um, bed, truck beds, or if you're thinking about the egg masses laying on trailer hitches, and wheel wells, anything that's standing still, uh, the females will lay their eggs on when they are ready. Hard goods, we've found it on stone. You can pick up rocks in infected areas, and they're on the bottoms of rocks. Uh, decorative materials, such as tile, would also be a concern. Firewood, they will lay on the outside of the bark. If they can, the females will go underneath, under the bark, and also lay, so we don't want to be a source of moving egg masses around that way, nursery stock, and then also decorative materials. We know that they like to go to wild grape, so you have to think about things such as your wreaths and whether or not you find any of the life stages on that. So what can you move? Well, once you inspect and make sure that you have no life state, living life stage of the insect on any of those items I just named, you can move them. We just are asking people to stop for an extra minute or two, inspect um, goods that have been stored outside or their vehicles, especially if you're parking in tree lines, and inspect them, make sure there are no life stages, and then you can move throughout the quarantine area. For residents, we have a self-certification -certific checklist that you can use. Um, it is found on the web page. We also have copies that are being distributed by townships and also by Penn State Extension. If you're going to a camping location and you're coming from the quarantine, you can take this, check off the items that you are taking with them. It shows that you have inspected them. You sign it, and it becomes a legal documentation, legal document for you to be able to move uh, out of the quarantine. And I have received phone calls asking if this is a legitimate form, and yes, it is. And it is something that I would um, recommend to residents if they're uh, leaving the area, if they're selling items from the quarantine. It's always a good idea to have this so people know that you have taken this seriously and are looking uh, for the insect before you move out. For businesses operating in the quarantine area, we have a phytosanitary certificate. And this can be issued by a plant inspector. Um, this is one of those things that if you only need one or two within a year, uh, you should just use a phytosanitary certificate. If you have multiple commodities that you're moving or you're moving them in and out almost on a daily basis, a compliance agreement would probably work better for you. These also can be issued by the plant inspectors uh, in the Region 7 staff, and they will come in, they will do a risk assessment, determine if it's high or low for you, and then determine what form is best for you to operate under for businesses. Many times I get questions about handling leaves and grass clippings uh, because those materials are so small for, leaf, uh, for grass clippings um, and the leaves are so light. Researchers do not believe that the egg masses will be laid on this material Therefore, it is fine for you to move it out of the quarantine area, especially if your township has 
certain areas that they like for this material to be placed in, feel free to move it. Um, I do ask that if you're putting them into bags prior to moving them, that the bags not be stored um, outside in a tree line, inspect the bags to make sure that they don't have any hitchhikers on them. So what can you do with woody material? We're coming into that season. We've had a couple of storms already. Winter snows are coming in, so what do we need to do? If the woody debris stays within the quarantine area, you do not need a compliance agreement. Uh, it is safe to stay there. You can certainly feel free to burn it. Um, if you have an outdoor area where you want to, to burn it or you heat your home with wood, it's fine to use that. If you'd like to chip it and it stays in the quarantine area, again, no compliance agreement is needed. For people who use this as a business, um, who are mulch producers or loggers or arborists and going in and out of the quarantine, a compliance agreement may be required. That's where you would want to contact your regional uh, PDA staff and they can work with you, determine the risk associated with your business, and then issue you the compliance agreement. This is the current quarantine area that we have. Um, you will see uh, the core areas right in here. Uh, we do have high populations there. All the outer areas here, um, the population is much lower, and that's a good thing. Um, that helps, and that has been determined through our survey teams. They have been going out. Also, it has been a matter of having residents call us because they have sighted spotted lanternfly, and certainly when we go to investigate, we can confirm. Uh, we have an 80% plus um, rate in people reporting and we finding that those reports are true. So thank you. Um, please continue to send that information to us and we will continue to investigate. The sooner we are able to find the areas with spotted lanternfly, the sooner we are to get in there, uh, start treatment, and hopefully eradicate this sooner rather than later. These are all the groups that are currently working to determine how, what we can do to mitigate and what we can do to help eradicate this insect from Pennsylvania. So there are lots of many, a lot of teams out there working for us and we certainly appreciate all the so support they have given to us and for the USDA um, funding the majority of this work that is being done. So. Lots of people working to find the answers that we need. Enforcement. Uh, for business, um, part of what we do um, are the inspectors that are done by the PDA inspector and the compliance agreements that are issued or the phytosanitary certificates that I've talked about. And for residents, uh, the che checklist that you do for a self-check um, and then reporting new finds that helps us move forward, helps us keep uh, the insect contained within the area and minimizes any enforcement action that we may have to take. The cooperation from both business and residents uh, has been great and we appreciate that and we hope to have that continued support. We cannot do this alone. I am asked many times about fines and who could be fined. Uh, we certainly are not looking to find anyone who is showing due diligence and who is trying to do the right thing, we would much rather have compliance assistance available for businesses and for the residents working within the quarantine area. For those who may maliciously move and knowingly move items out of the quarantine, which may pose a threat to the rest of Pennsylvania or to other states, yes, fines could be imposed. But again, that is not our primary focus. Compliance assistance is. We've been doing a lot of outreach since we began um, in 2014. Um, one of the first things that we did is what we refer to as a see it, scrape it card. It is about the size of a credit card and it's a tool. It gives you uh, the life stages of the insect, what to look for. Also, it provides some contact information. So if you do find the insect, who you should contact is on there. And the card can also be used to scrape off egg masses. So uh, kind of a twofer. 
uh, which we are finding many people to really find this to be a handy tool, fits in your wallet very easily and you can carry it with you. Another message that we have been sending out um, is the look before you leave. Um, townships are issued metal signs with this message on it. They are placed in public areas. Um, this is to inform the public of the quarantine areas and also of the different life stages so you know exactly what to look for before you leave. Also, we have a new digital director in our press office and she is putting us on Facebook with our messages getting out there. So if you do have Facebook, please like us. Uh, we would like to get that information out to you. This information is also shared with our partners, the advisory group, which are the elected officials uh, for the townships and for the counties and for the state. So you may see this message multiple times, especially if we have an update for you. We have new this, this year, we are going to do a calendar contest. So if you have children that fall within the grades of one through six, uh, November 14th is the deadline, and we would like to ask them to tell us or to demonstrate to us how they would look before you leave um, with regards to the spotted lantern fly. And if you'd like more information about that, if you go to the agriculture webpage under spotted lantern fly and forms, you'll be able to find the rules and also a submission form. So please, um, if let's get those artists out there and, and get some uh, nice messaging going and the 12, the top 12 will be placed in the calendar which will be distributed farm show. So that you know what we are doing. Since 2015, we've had 199 inspections completed. Uh, these are for businesses. Uh, we've issued 138 certificates and 48 compliance agreements. And the compliance agreements range from nursery stock to loggers to mulch. So lots of different businesses are contacting us and we are getting uh, these compliance agreements signed. We've had 698 business trainees uh, go through our program. And so far, Sven and I have conducted over 100 meetings of public meetings. And I know that Emily and the extension team has been out there as well and they probably have at least that many meetings too. How can you help us? Well, knowing what the quarantine area is and knowing about the life stages, um, you can help us by looking for the insect, reporting when you find the insect, and helping us when we are issuing treatment orders. Uh, we can't do this alone. We have to have your support. And one thing I always tell everyone when I talk to them, when we talk eradication, we're not talking a few months, we're not talking one or two years. You need to understand that we're probably looking at 10 to 14 years for an eradication program. Pennsylvania has been successful in the past. We successfully eradicated plumpox virus disease, um, and we think that we can do this too. So please help us. Please continue to give us the support so that we can uh, get the insect spotted the land and fly out of Pennsylvania and out of the United States. If you would like to report or have questions, uh, here's the contact information. Please feel free, um, but please um, make sure that you're reporting to Bad Bug or to Spotted Lantern Fly. If you're in the quarantine area, leave your name and your, your number. Someone will get back with you. If you have compliance agreements, that you would like or you need a certificate, contact Howard Walker. Um, I am able to answer quarantine questions for you. If you would like to be a part of our volunteer or treatment order program, please contact John Baker. And then Sven, Sven Spickature is our program um, specialist, so please contact him if you have questions about spotted lanternfly. I wanna thank you all very much for your time and um, giving me your attention. And I hope that this is good information for you to have. And if you have any additional questions, please make, feel free to contact us and go to our webpage at agriculture.pa.gov and click on Spotted Lanternfly to learn more about how you can help us. Thank you.